Hello, Sandra Ambleson here, and we are going live. And I'm being guided to speak today, and again, having very little knowledge at all of what's to come through. So I'm going to wait. So I'm going to wait with me. Okay, wait with me. Uh, while we, because we were definitely guided to get up and, and do this today. Mm -hmm. So wait with me as I uh, open myself up as a vessel and I say whatever galactic family has to say, what other higher beings. Hmm. I'm hearing Mrs. Jesus. What does Mrs. Jesus have to say? Hmm. Okay. Well, I've written a book called Mr. And Mrs. Jesus, and in it made the claim of having um, encountered that energy in an individual. Hmm. Yeah. I have. I did. I did. I, I met a man who carried the energy of the Christ, like, who was... showed me holographically the Christ in him and the Christ in him said that I'm in here. So that was enough to set me off on, an, on a spiritual journey of its own, figuring out how could that have happened? How could a holographic image come out of an individual of Jesus Christ and then say to you, sit the holograph, say to you, I'm in here and then go back into that person. That's been my problem I've tried to solve. That's been the little bit of information I received um, that uh, was enough to set me on, off on a, and embark on a, on a, down a rabbit hole that uh, I, I didn't know what would happen. And it's like, I'm living this story and you say to yourself, but what if it's, for everybody to hear. What if there's importance that you share this story and what's going on with it? Because I don't feel I've got a category. I don't feel I fit in anywhere. Uh, I feel I'm like out here on my own trying to say I'm taking this, the return of the Christ story uh, very seriously and that st saying that is enough to make all most spiritual beings or some people who are who are saying, oh no, uh, that person's you know ego, that person's this. Like, why would I care about that? Like, so much judgment even in spiritual world, spiritual world because there's spiritual laws you adhere to, and one of the spiritual laws we all adhere to is that we're all part of the one. We all have the one mind. We all have one mind. It's the Christ mind. And everybody shares in that Christ mind. So that connection with God and that ability to speak to God and find that God, that higher voice, that higher wisdom that is within us, it's for everyone to do. Um, but you can't make the claim that uh, as we shift into the 5D dimension and we all move into that higher realm, that you're going to see people that have previously passed on their energy and their spirit. Like you think when I go to heaven, all my relatives will be there and I want to meet Isaac Newton. I want to meet, you know, Rembrandt. I want to meet all these people when I, you know, in that higher realm. I can't wait to joke around with Dr. David Hawkins. We're so, he say he makes me laugh. He was so like how we read, how we receive. And so um, and he's such a character and he speaks to me all the time. I can connect with him all the time. I connect with Dolores Cannon all the time. I connect with Jesus all the time because I see them in a physical form and I know that they're a being, but I also know they're still present and they haven't died. Like their energy is still out there and I can communicate with them all the time. And it's like I've been entrusted with this story about if all these people from the past come forward and have chosen a body, can't Christ do the same? He was a body, he was a person, and yet he was a galactic being, and yet he had the, received full awareness uh, from creator source on a daily basis. Like 
his awareness was such that he could hear and receive all things, re hear and receive all messages. He just had to listen. He just had to listen in the stillness. And then he could hear and know everything. He was, he received the knowing. He received the awareness. But here's the thing. He received the knowing and the awareness as he needed it. It was it, like it's always in us. It just has to be revealed. And the thing about Christ is he reached that point where everything was revealed to him, including how to raise the dead, heal the sick, you know, all those things. He, he learned all those skills. He moved up the spiritual ladder until he had uh, acquired all those skills and shown us that they're possible, that we can do this too, that we have this ability within us. But as an individual soul person occupying a body, that Christ energy walked in to a soul being, to a, to a body, a physical being, and, and was that enlightened energy in a person. And so we could hear God, we could see God. It was tangible, it was real. And we needed it at the time. But if we're in that time right now where everyone is revealing themselves and people who are in the eternal realm are, see, they're discovering it too. They're discovering who they are. They're discovering who they are right now. And you might have an inkling of who you are. And, um, or you might really strongly believe you know who you were in a past life. And my suggestion to you is this. Don't worry so much about that as being it. If you want to claim to be Cleopatra, then act like it. Be her. You want to be Mrs. Jesus, then act like her. You want the Magdalene, the Holy Grail, then act like her. Oh, okay. Well, how would she act? How would Mrs. Jesus act? How would she act? What would she do? Well, if she was in charge of the church when he was out of body, why would he leave her in charge of the church? Because he could come in her body. They were a twin flame soul. He had access to her mind, to her spirit, her body, being half of it, being the other half of it. Has the knowledge and the wisdom and the ability to speak through that other body. That's why he left her in charge of it, because he could come through her and speak through her and live and be in her. The two of them were sharing a body. So he became no body. He left and became, I don't have a body, but I'm in her. I can speak through her. I can communicate with her. And then when he did walk back in, he walked into his empty tomb, tomb that was offered up by his uncle, which is Joseph of Arimathea. And uh, he went into that tomb. And then Joseph of Arimathea takes Mary, not the mother of Jesus, the wife of Jesus. So this has all got to be cleared up. And it's not that... Uh, there's no ego wanting all, oh, I want all the glory to go on Mary Magdalene and take it away from the Holy Mother. Look, I'm, I'm saying that it was taken away from Mag, Mary Magdalene and put on the Holy Mother. And so it's not that I'm taking away of the honor that she's deserving at all, but I feel there was um, something nefarious, a manipulation there that took away from the power of the feminine, which was take her power away by ignoring her. And having spoken to a number of nefarious individuals, they affirmed to me, they're really good at ignoring people and turning people off. And what happens when you ignore people, they go away. They eventually go away. You just have to be patient. It's banishment is we won't pay any attention to you. And that is, very powerful weapon if you're shut down to God. Because if you're ignoring what is God, you'd be in a low vibrational frequency, wouldn't you? So what does it matter to you if people in a lower vibrational frequency can see you or not? What's it matter to you? They can't see you. They're ignoring you. They can't see you. They don't have the ability to get their vibration up that high. And so you remain invisible and you remain a threat. You remain a threat because they're aware of the light, but they just don't know what to do about it.
instead of embracing it and giving themselves over. Why is this happening? Why is this person contacting? Why am I seeing this individual? Embracing it. But if you're trying to protect your domain, if you're a liar and you can't create, and you're constructing some site or some uh, big story, and you can't back it up. I remember going to see a, a woman who uh, did the pata tapes. She went around touring, doing the pata tapes. And one of the claims she said was that when she's in trance, she can't remember anything. And um, she also made a hand signal behind her back when she was speaking. And I'm sure that came through her uh, when she was an active channel for the Palladians. But uh, after they finished speaking through her, they left and she had no new material, but she still wanted to make the money from, I shouldn't make that judgment. Maybe she just wanted to pass the good word around. Shouldn't make the judgment she wanted money, that she just wanted to pass the word, continue to pass the word around, but she was profiting from it. And at the end, I went up and introduced myself and talked to her and asked her a question and clearly caught her in a trap because I mentioned something she said. And when she said, oh yeah, this and this, I go, I thought you said you couldn't remember when you're chanting and she could. So I caught her lying. And then after the thing, uh, the con conference, we went out and we were having dinner and it just so happens the speaker was sitting right in my line of eyesight having her dinner too. She was with her people. And wouldn't you know what? I looked and turned and saw her and she saw me and I was in her direct sight. And it was almost, I see you. And she knew it. She was scared. I could feel it from her. But I, I don't know. I didn't hear much about her after that. Something told me she did the right thing and stopped speaking. I don't know. Maybe she didn't. But she, came, she was removed from my field. I didn't hear about her. She, she left my, my knowing. Okay. All right. So here, let's go back a bit to why would I be, why would I be coming forward to speak as Mrs. Jesus? What would she say? Wow. Well, part of the act of being the Christ, having known the Christ, was that the activity of a healer who doesn't want to be seen, who's out not out to make money, but is being sent by God, um, is to take the negative energy that's existing on the planet and then you call upon the energy and then you see crystal white light coming from your monad down through your soul star and down into the person, the thing, or the situation, or the body that's needing the healing. And you bring that crystal light from your mana down through your soul star and into your body. And that brings out healing. And to be able to transmute negative energy to positive. Okay, so here's what, what's been happening for Mrs. Jesus. It seems I'm absorbing what is happening and the maladies or the illnesses or the diseases that are existing out there are manifesting in me. And I'm in the observer position where I'm watching these things manifest and I'm wondering why this is all happening. And it's the test of, will you create it in you? You're, you're showing all these symptoms, you're feeling all these aches and pains. And it's like, will you own it? Will you claim it? Will you go diagnosis and then try and fight it and cure it? Or will you see it as nothing? Will you see whatever is manifesting in you as nothing? Meaning, I don't, I'm not going to own that. Yes, I hear that. Yes, I see that. Yes, those symptoms are, are displaying itself. And in this vibration, I'm just going to sit and watch God work. Whatever it is I'm needing, God will bring to me. I don't have to fight this. I don't have to uh, own it and deal with it. it. It feels as if the energy is just go lie down. Just go rest. Let God 
handle this. Because I'm aware it's too much. I get overwhelmed. It's too much. I can't handle all this. What is, what is poor little me going to do about it? There's nothing I can do about it. All things are done through me by God. So having recognized I have no power and trusting that everything is given to me when I need it, then that's where I'll be. That's the only position I can take. That's the only camp I can, you know, tent I can pitch in my camp is that I have no power. I have none. I have no power. And moving into that mindset, now you realize there's no point fighting what comes along. It's meant to. It's meant to. Okay. I, I'm, the only way that we can uh, be authentic with one another and share with one another is to be who it is and, and who we are at all times without hiding anything. So I just had a 360 flip and I wanna talk about the energy of, some people have been cited to do something and some people have not. And for those people that decided to do something, whether it was in ignorance or not caring, or it's basically unawareness. They were unaware. My biggest anger is at those who would take advantage of God's creation that were unaware, knowing that they're unaware, setting them up to be unaware and taking advantage of it. That, that gets me going, right? Because all God's children and all God's creation are holy, they're God's creation. So you want to be honoring God's creation, supporting and loving God and God's creation. Okay. So there's two camps, and here I'm solidly in this camp. And then all of a sudden, things get turned around, and I realized inadvertently Oh no, I'm showing signs of being in this camp. How could that be? I didn't choose to go in this camp and never did anything to warrant it. How could I be showing symptoms of this camp? Why Why am, is my body showing symptoms as if I had done and made this choice when I clearly didn't? I think I made a discovery of how this is passed on to this. Yeah, and it's exchanging saliva. So, now all of a sudden I'm finding, oh, I'm showing this over here. And now I'm being made aware of all the thoughts of how it is we judged one another during, well, you're gonna, I'm gonna do this while I'm not. Then how, how did we judge those people that said, I'm gonna go do this? Everyone in this camp was going, well, you're an idiot. You didn't, haven't done your research. You shouldn't be doing that. You know, you're going to, you're going to pay. You're going to get it. Well, I'm going to do this and then keep, and then so I can keep traveling and I can keep ignoring the truth about what's really going on. I'm just happy doing all this. And over here in the camp, you're going, well, you shouldn't do that. What if something happens? And, you know, you really shouldn't, you know, have done that and, and inside you're kind of going, but I really wish I could travel too, but I'm not willing to pay, pay the price to do it. So do you secretly harbor thoughts of you'll pay someday? You'll see, I made the right decision and you, you didn't and you're gonna suffer. And then you make this, well, you, you justify, well, I'm not traveling and getting to do these things uh, or get this great job right now, but it will, you know, you think it'll switch, but you're, you're, you're sacrificing, you're giving stuff up to hold your position, to protect yourself and hold your position. But all of a sudden, if things are turned around and through no real fault of your own, no real awareness of your own, you're all of a sudden now saying, hey, wait, 
the collective consciousness is filled with this fear and I'm manifesting it being in the lower frequencies or am I? Am I in the lower frequencies if it's being manifested? Well, yeah, the lower your light, the lower vibration, the more you manifest, right? A dis-ease. But if you're consciously aware and you let go of the fight and then you say, wait a minute, what if this is all supposed to happen? And, and what I'm, I'm talking about is how I survived part of not going in that camp was I told myself things. I kept myself strong when, it, when the times were tough. When you're being ostracized, when you're being ignored, rejected, kicked out, and you find yourself on your own because you're taking a stand for what you believe in. That can be a painful, lonely spot. And the, during that time, how do you keep going? What thoughts do you have? Well, one of them is, well, you'll be sorry and you should have listened to me and blah, blah, blah. But what happens if you're on that side of the fence and now all of a sudden through, like I said, through the collective consciousness, because it's so in the energy, the majority of the people have this. So there's the majority of the people going into the fear about it. What if you, as an observer, as a light being, take it on? Would Mrs. Jesus do that? Would Jesus do that? Yeah, they take that on. Why? So they can heal it. They take it on, their physical body, and they would go into the other camp, the lepers. So what good is Mrs. Jesus in the camp of the lepers? Well, let's just see. Let's just see. If by healing yourself, it heals the others. And that's why it was, I manifested it. So I could try my, the shoes on, see what the food's like and what the action is in the other camp. Because I was so solidly in this camp. Now I'm finding, oh, I think I'm over here now. And how does that switch me? How does that switch my judgment? What does that say about me? Right? Why am I meant to experience that? Well, I cannot heal anything I'm not aware of. And now that I've been aware of things, the secret is don't own it, observe it, watch it, and know it will pass. It will pass. It's just a suggestion. Don't make it real by owning it or diagnosing it or fighting it. Just watch it and just have your faith that, oh, well, there's a reason this is happening. It's great when I receive the awareness of why. And so being that vessel for God and Mrs. Jesus, she would love all of God's creation and would take it on, would take it on to herself to heal her children, right? To hear God's children. That, I think that's what Mrs. Jesus would keep doing. I'm just letting you know I'm finding myself where I never thought I would be. And every time I muscle test, uh, you know, I bring to that Dr. David Chris Hawkins. Dr. David Hawkins, will you be with us today? Yes, I will. Oh, I'm back on camera. Uh, there's a sense of humor. It's so funny. We need your help today because we want to test something about Sandra. Can we do that? Yes. All right. So, Dr. David Hawkins, are, are you fully present? Are you here? Resist? Yes. He's here. He's here. Can you see that? Yeah. He's here. All right. Is Sandra's body healthy? Yes. Is she ill? No, not yes. Is she completely healthy? Yes. Her body's healthy. Yes. Yes. Is there any dis-ease in her body? Not, not, no, not yes. There isn't. She's strong. She's healthy. Her heart is strong. Her heart is healthy. Her body is free from any dis-ease. Everything in her is in perfect divine health. She has abundance and wealth. Yes, all these things are true. Well, thank you, Dr. David Hawkins. Thank you. And right there. So if my body's showing symptoms of something and my higher self is, no, no, you're healthy. You're perfectly fine. Everything is well. How can that be? How can that be? Because we're in an illusion and we're in the matrix. And that's why you don't buy into it. Because it's not real. Feels real, but don't own it. 
meaning don't have it in your thoughts. Don't fear it. There, that's it. Don't fear it. Don't fear. Oh my God, I'm sick. I'm going to die. Oh my God, I've been in this camp and I've had this. Oh my God, I'm going to die. Don't fear it. If you've got a good heart and a good soul, you have to ask yourself why you would take that on and how could you still be of God and not be mad at God for not stopping you. If you believe in God and he's got your, he, she, mother, father, God's got your back and you had to go to this camp and you didn't want to, do you not think God knows that? Do you not think God knows your heart? Of course. Do you not think God's going to... Uh, heal you, help you to, lead you to your healing, lead you to the people, the vibrational frequencies that will free you and heal you. Of course God would do that. But don't fear that he wouldn't because when you go into the fear, you, you lose your connection with God. When you go into the low vibration of fear, you, you are distancing yourself from the vibration of love that is God. And so you can't hear God when you're in fear. You lose your God connection. Ah, getting this, being in this camp cuts off your God connection because you go into the fear. Well, you've done this. Now you're going to die. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I don't believe that. That's not a truth. I may have had this, been in this camp, but it doesn't mean I'm going to die in this camp. It just means this is what's going on. And I chose to experience this. And other people chose to experience this. What if we get the conscious awareness and the high frequencies that are coming into the planet and it disintegrates all the demons, all the dis-ease is now gone. And there's these people that you've been looking at that went in that camp and thinking they're going to die and they're dead. Oh, oh, wait a minute, we're not. I know some people wished for some people would go and can't wait till it gets you. But what if it's not? Do you understand? What if it's not? What if both camps join? What if both camps are exonerated? What if all of God's creation is exonerated. What will you do then? What are you going to do with your judgments? This has been a really big thing for me to have this 360, to have to go visit the other camp and put aside my judgments and my thoughts and examine what I thought was going to happen to those people. What if it doesn't? What if everything works out okay? What if all of this too is God? What if God is in both camps? right? It's interesting to have your perspective suddenly turned around because the basic rules, spiritual law, I, picked, I found a crow feather, which is uh, this morning before I shot the crow feather, which is family and spiritual law going into the void, the black, the void and creating creating what it is that we want to see, what outcome we want to see. If we're creating in the next few days before the 11th of November in this 11th month, and they say it's on the 12th. I read some articles where people are saying we've got 9th. By the 9th, you need to make the decision about which side you're choosing because there'll be a separation. And you, oh, I want to choose the light. I want to choose being in the fifth dimension. I've worked hard to develop my consciousness. So the truth is you've been called. God's allowed you to awaken. God's the one delivering your awarenesses to you. That's who you want to thank is God. If you're awakened and you're moving to the higher level, it's because of your communication with God. It's because of your love for God. That's the only ticket you need. That's what gets you there. So it's about finding that love for God, finding that connection with God. Can you find it in a day or two? I, I think in God's mercy, 
it's it's once the the high vibrations here and the demons are gone the darkness has been removed what if the people in your life that were filled with the demon or filled with the darkness what if that leaves them now and all of a sudden they're standing there and they're not the same person because there isn't a demon in them dictating their life controlling their thoughts telling them what to do what if that demon's removed and now all of a sudden everyone is back to being a child of God and it's like oh my god I had a demon in me I was out of my mind I was doing this and this and this I was doing this to myself and this to myself don't think little miss Mrs. Jesus here is without her demons mm -hmm. there's a, a sugar addiction here mm -hmm. I know it and and uh I'm aware of it and the awareness makes the necessary changes without the struggle and that was taught to me by a really beautiful soul, a really beautiful woman who, for some reason in my life, she came into my life when I was younger. And um, I think his name, her name was Lynn. And she was this beautiful, wonderful woman who did massage. And she had been over and studied in India and stuff. And she knew a lot. She was really a spiritual being. And, and she was there. She gave me a massage and put such good energy into me at a time when I was healing. When I was just really starting my journey, she was one of the people that was instrumental. And I thank her now and I'm acknowledging her now. I'm seeing her and pitching her. What a beautiful soul she was. Well, I'll go through my diaries and find her name and, and, and report back to you who she is. But she told me that. And I didn't understand it when I heard it at the time. Right? You don't have to do anything. You don't have to struggle. It's when you receive the awareness, oh, I have addiction for that, or that's taking up a lot of my energy, or why can't I seem to stop doing something? It's the awareness that you're in a pattern. And then when you have that awareness, you're in a pattern. Now, it's like, be aware that you're in that pattern. And the awareness makes the changes. You don't have to struggle. Or, or oh, I got to go on a diet. Oh, I got to give up sugar. Oh, oh. I acknowledge it now. That's it. I'm giving it all up and all. That's not how it works. It's I have the awareness, my sugar uh, consumption. I like jam with breakfast. Homemade jam. <laughs> Take it with me wherever I go. Um, that's the queen in me. And so she, she likes to come forward and she likes to have her jam and toast. Yes, it's sugar. Can I make it okay? Yes. Yes, it's okay. Because if I'm desiring it, I can see that when you overindulge in something, this happens. So it's like the body without, it's you're not even conscious of it, but your sugar content, your consumption starts to go down. Just being aware that you're, oh, I'm a little concerned about sugar consumption. It's like dieting or anything else. The moment, you know, what, what, what we're going to do this, we're going to do that, well, New Year's, we'll start, we'll go on this program. The moment you try to control yourself or control the situation, it's like it sucks the energy out of the room. And so, even though there's all these thoughts coming at me in the lower dimensions that I'm susceptible to when my vibration falls, but it's being able to hear the thoughts that come and know they're not yours, don't attach them. Don't say, oh, they must be right. That thought, I'm going to make it my own. I'm going to, I'm going to believe that about myself. Thoughts are thoughts. See them as thoughts. Whenever you get a thought, it's just a thought. Whenever somebody tells you something negative about yourself, you internalize it. They're just expressing a judgment and a thought. Just hear it. Oh, that's their judgment and their thought. Does it have any impact on you? Only if you let it. Only if you take the seed that that they believe about you and then you take it and grow it within you and you believe it too. You want to remain open in that when you hear some new information and it makes you feel good, that you can change your mind. That, well, I didn't think of this before. Now I'm going to change my mind just like it, because I have more awareness now. So now I have more awareness just going back to that, that in the collective conscious, there's a fear about health. There's a fear about this. And so being in an access to the consciousness, 
I'm aware of that negative vibration of, of fear. And so that fear, low vibration, is manifesting this on the planet. So understand, it's just the fear that cannot manifest anything. It's us that manifests. But if they put us in a greatest amount of fear, we'll manifest fear. Isn't that amazing? How smart to fool us and to place us in a position where we have forgotten we are creators. So now we awaken, well, if I'm a creator, what do I want to create? And wouldn't that be a really big thought to ponder over the next few days as we as a collective choose to create our new world? And as someone who has been speaking out and sharing their thoughts for many years now, my creation is, and I've said it over and over again, what, what do I expect in the 5D? Perfect health, abundance, receiving awareness when I need it. But for me, it's, it's just making good friends, having intellectual conversations, stimulating my brain, learning new information, meeting everyone and knowing that as soon as they walk walking toward you, oh, God's showing up with a new thought, a new lesson, a new person. This is a new adventure. What are they going to tell me? Like everything everything that happens to you is a gift from God. Living that awareness, everyone you meet is a gift from God. Everything that's happening to you is from God directly. There's no fear. Just accept everything with an open heart and go, oh, what's, what's they're going to tell me? What's going to happen now? It's that openness to receive what is, that awareness that everything is of God and you're, you're hearing it. You're receiving it all the time and you can trust it. You can trust it. And that's what happens in the higher dimensions is you start to trust. You're able to trust. And you're able to trust yourself that you will know what is right and what is wrong based on your vibrational frequency. Because when someone starts tries to lie in the higher dimensions, what happens if the energy drops in the room? You don't have to say anything. It's a clear giveaway. Oh, they're lying. How do you know? My energy just fell. I got a bad feeling. That means it's not true. That means it's not in alignment with the 5D frequencies. So you can detect truth by how you feel. And that's the vibration. Truth carries that vibration. And we're all little truth detectors. We're all walking around now, little truth detectors. What's true for you? What's true for you is what you believe. I believe I am so close to seeing Christ walk into a different, walk into a new body and come up and say, I'm back. And as I'm telling you this, I have the awareness of how many people are unable to hear that. But it doesn't matter to me because in my reality, in my world, I'll know it. I'll know it. And now I'll be vibrating as a whole twin flame again. I'll, my counterpart will come back. And then when, when he does, what will happen is we're going to move into that eternal realm. We'll be joining in that eternal realm. And in the eternal realm, what energies can we produce? What love frequencies can we escalate to, to send out to the planet? And that's the biggest threat of all, is when you're making love and you're creating love energy that's the highest vibration. That's why sexuality is being removed. That's why we are being complacent and why, why we're not allowing our natural sexual desires for one another. It's been stifled and suppressed. Be in the awareness of it and then be open to the change, if any, that might come your way. But the understanding of uh, embracing our sexuality and our creativity uh, in sexuality and the end goal, which is sending out love frequencies. That's what Mr. and Mrs. Jesus will be doing in the eternal realm. Again, is creating love energies for the eternal realm, as, as will all, as will all in that higher frequency, in the twin flame unions. All right, well, I think that's, um, is there anything else I need to share? Uh, Let's ask. Mm. 
I'm really still marveling at my last video uh, when I was sharing about seeing the UFOs. That was so big. That was like, tomorrow it'll be two weeks, th two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago I saw it. Maybe three weeks ago. And uh, it's, it's with me, you know, the presence of the ships, it's with me. I can feel them. And, and like I said, it's more the stability. It's more the presence of them, the assurance of them. But reminding myself, yeah, I saw that. And again, in my world, I did. I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm just telling you, I did. And I do. And me taking this stand for the return of the Christ, I have the conscious awareness that that's what I'm to do. So I'm sticking to it because it's all I got. All I, all I have is what I know. All I have is my relationship to God. All I have is the awareness that I receive. Now you either believe it or you don't. You either are connected to God or you're not. And I know I am. Therefore, all thoughts that I receive, I know I'm always being guided. And, and everything that happens is to awaken me further, to awaken me further, to see now that, to see what I might have judged or condemned or, or, or had to defend myself against. Now I'm seeing, oh wait, when it comes out in the wash, we're all together again. We're all just one. I chose to do, to do, do this to bring people, to make people aware. I chose to do this to make people aware. But truthfully, isn't it your awareness? Isn't it your awareness that will guide where you're walking into? And, and um, to me, it's, it's, it's so the meeting of the minds of being able to sit and have intelligent conversations with Alan Watts, and Dolores, and Dr. David Hawkins, and David Baum, and Krishnamurti. Uh, you know, I'm... I know I'm, and, 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 and Joshua and Joseph, I know that there's going to be some good times ahead because that's what excites me. That's what I'm creating is that ability to speak and knowing, right? And being, to be able to have a whole conversation for an afternoon and all you did was just be with somebody. Just sharing the frequency, the field with each other. It's having a happy time. It's it's not just creating affluence. It's about creating adventures. It's creating experiences where you get to see God at work. You get to see God coming through you and coming through others. And so it's like, I get to see God work. I get to see God in action every day, all the time. And that's why heaven could come to earth because if you're of the awareness now that everything is God and everything that comes to you is God, you're there, you're in that mentality, you're in that dimension when you can let go of your fears and move into the trust. Oh, if this is happening, there must be a good reason. Oh, if this happens, it doesn't matter, God's got me. It's where you are in your world and what experiences you can bring to yourself. And it's not seeking approval for others for it. It's saying, this is what happened to me. You can deal with it however you want. But I'm sharing the good. I'm sharing the good. So, it's, it's wanting to see that return of that uh, soul half, that twin flame as a walk-in or whatever else God's got in mind, but the rejoicing of the reconnecting of the whole soul. Because uh, it's fun to share things with somebody. It's, you know, it's fun to be with somebody. It's fun to go on a spiritual journey and be able to say, well, this is happening to me. Well, what's happening to you? Well, let's discover this together. Yeah, let's do this. What are you working on? I'm doing this. And then you help each other. But you can work in the higher realms where real work can be done when you're receiving new information. You're receiving new awarenesses. 
And really, selfishly, that's where I am right now and doing most, most of my work in the higher dimensions because I don't want to wait. It, it's just I want to get up there and get working and get doing things. So, uh, and then I can report back to you and tell you what's going on. But it's such an observation being on this journey and uh, seeing how other people react around you and how you're received and, and then what judgments you make. But I feel really good right now in that well, if we really separate in a few days and one world goes one way and one world goes the other, what's that gonna feel like? Aren't you excited to see what it looks like? To see what happens? And know that you'll receive the knowing that you'll all be guided through it. We'll all be guided through it. Yeah, that's what I want to say. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you for, uh, thank you, yeah, for listening. I hope you see some vibrational frequencies that lifted you, uh, that you could relate to, that inspired you, but mostly that you took comfort in, right? We're here to help each other. Yeah, we're here to help each other. I didn't get charged for the information that just came through. So that's why I, there's no charge. Oh, get that. There's no charge in the lower dimensions. In the higher frequencies, I'm charged. The light frequencies charge me. Yes, that's the only charge not financial. How about that? That was cool. I was glad I just got that. Okay. Thanks. Bye.